Welcome, my darlings, to my humble chateau. Please make yourself very comfortable. Relax your mind and release your imagination to me. I will bring you a story to entrance and entertain. Perhaps a frightening one. Perhaps a steampunk. Perhaps a bit of mythology. Anyway, sit back. Enjoy. Enjoy. And subscribe. Panikia, a steampunk fairy tale by Joey Findlay Part 3 Chapter 14 It happened so quickly that even pin sensors found it difficult to comprehend what took place. One minute Pin felt sensations that indicated he was free-falling, heading straight towards the sand beach below. The next minute a click sounded and he was soaring just above the surf, flying on his own pair of wings. He used his gyro huzawatsit to guide himself above the waves, using changes in the air currents to lift him higher. Leaning right, he turned full circle, climbing higher into the sky. He looked at Spidey as the critter tapped his neck. Spidey tickled his ears, climbing up his head, and tapped on his goggles. Pulling the goggles over his eyes, Pin used their magnification to see, in greater detail, schools of fish surfing the waves and a flock of birds heading towards land. He could see for miles with them on. Spidey curled up in his shirt collar as they continued to climb higher on his wonderful wings. What a sight! Pin turned to look at his newfound wings. They weren't very big considering his weight, but they did the job perfectly. They had come out of his backpack, folded out when Spidey released them as they fell. The wings folded up perfectly to fit into the space in his backpack, but once extended they measured twice his height across. He couldn't determine the type of material they were made of, but believed them to be made of some kind of lightweight titanium alloy. His appreciation of Lord Petal's genius grew to new heights. Pin leaned into his left shoulder, turning again. He found Lord Petal and Monstro lifting slowly above the village. The residents waved from their homes and fields. Many pointed at Pin flying around the massive balloon, cheering him on. Pin watched Lord Petal smile and wave to those below him. So he, too, smiled and waved, to whom he wasn't sure, but, but wave he did. Pin, how marvelous you found your wings. Pin watched as his Pepe leaned over the edge of the balloon's wicker basket to yell at him. I must say they work perfectly. Come join me in Monstro, my giant of a hot air balloon. Pin circled, calculated his trajectory, and lined himself up to land just above the basket. He pulled his wings in at the last minute, using momentum to land him in the right place. He crash-landed upside down, his the air and his hat covering his face, goggles and all. Lord Petal laughed so hard that he landed on his bottom next to Pin in the bottom of the basket. There they sat, laughing with each other, until Petto leaked tears. Ah, oh, Panikia, my boy, well done, he exclaimed. Now tell me, where has your grand adventure taken you? How did you manage? Pin relayed to his Pepe the whole strange story. How he met Honesty, their trip to Skylands, the Penny Farthing ride, the children's buffet, and the trouble they both got into. He spoke of Spidey's rescue, their trip through the belly of the city, and the children they escaped with. At long last, 
as the sun began its downward climb. Pin spoke of trying to find Lord Petto in his home, and how he discovered he had wings strapped to his back. Lord Petto laughed again, clapping Pin on his shoulders. I'm so glad you are safe, and I'm glad you made it back in time to see Monstro in all his glory. They both looked up at the inside of the giant black balloon and its methane-fueled engine. They slowly floated over the land, while it was Lord Petto's turn to explain what he had been up to, while Pin and Spidey were lost to him. It was actually this giant project that kept me busy while you were on your grand adventures. You see, when you did not return from the market that day, I worried and fretted for days that something terrible must have happened to you. And, might I add, I had reason to worry. Something terrible did happen to you. I asked all over town for you until a sky dock worker said he saw you and a little lady take passage to Skylands. It's a long story, but I had vowed many years ago never to set foot in that city again. But I couldn't just leave you there, so I got out the plans for this contraption, and within days had it complete. I was just about to attempt a rescue of my own when you finally turned up. My boy, I'm very proud of you. Well done. He hadn't stopped smiling since Pin and Spidey returned. Chapter 15 They sat for a time in silence, until Lord Petto stood, adjusted their trajectory, set the burner going again, so he could lift to higher cross currents to take them back home again. They drifted higher, through the billowing cumulus clouds, to the currents that swept in the opposite direction. Once their village was in sight, Lord Petto asked Pin to climb up the side of the balloon as the top vent needed adjusting. I got seemed to get it open to let the hot air out. If we do not get this vent open, we might just keep flying to the moon, <laughs> he chuckled. Will you do it, my boy? I have guts, my lord, he replied, pulling his goggles on again. Lord Petto roared with laughter, causing Pin some confusion. He stepped up on the side of the basket and pulled himself up the guy ropes to the Monstro's top vent. It took some careful effort to adjust the vent, as he didn't want to rip the material. He released it, and the hot air whistled through the opening, fogging up Pin's goggles. Then it all went wrong. They descended too fast, and the ground came rushing at them, before Pin even made it back down to the basket. Hold tight, my boy. It's going to be a bumpy landing, yelled Lord Petto. They held on as the beach rose up to meet them. The basket bumped twice before turning and spilling most of its contents, dropping Monstro's envelope into the sea. Lord Petto had managed to stay inside the basket and hooted in pleasure once the balloon came to a stop. He clambered out, laughing at his misfortune, already calculating the needed design modifications. Villagers arrived from nearby to assist, helping Lord Petto gather up the now deflated balloon. Pin, my boy, come and give your old man a hand with this, he called. But when he heard no response, he dropped the swamping material and scrambled around to find Pin's whereabouts. Help me lift this. Help me with the basket, he demanded. A couple of strong men helped him lift it from the ground, only to find Pin, his incredible mechanical boy, underneath it. They all stopped what they were doing to watch Lord Petto gather Pin in his arms. He looked at the boy's silent face in sadness. Lifting his eyes to those nearest, he spoke. My boy, he was so brave. He saved them all, you know, and sat for a moment before carrying Pin back to his castle on the bluff. It took him many days to repair Pin's damage. Honesty came with coach and 
tiptoe and introduced themselves to the engineering genius. Lord Pin took them under his wings as mentor and guide, and instructed them at every chance, giving Honesty and Coach a fast-track education in higher engineering mechanics. They began to see just how important Pin was to this gentleman, and it became their priority each day to apprentice under him in order to bring Pin back to life. And try they did. After the twelfth time rebooting his systems to no avail, they sat back and wondered where they had gone wrong. Lord Petto scratched his face in frustration and picked up a cold cup of tea. Honesty removed grease-covered gloves and huffed hair out of her face. Coach crossed and uncrossed his arms, only to cross them again. Never ones to give up. They all started talking at once. We might need to take the... Why don't we the, try the... About removing the... They erupted in laughter. The stress of the operation broke in an instant. They moved over to Pin's plans to discuss their next move, leaving Pin lying on the bench table. Then a curious thing happened. Spidey crawled up his arm and into his shirt. He found a series of cogs and wires in Pin's chest and set off an electrical charge by touching his little head to the heart of Pin's mechanics. He climbed out again and tapped at Pin's collar. Pin blinked a few times as his visual sensors came into focus. He smiled at Spidey and sat up on the table. While the other three were hovering over blueprints and designs, they didn't notice Pin had joined them, watching over their shoulder. They continued to discuss Pin on ways to set things right again. Is it worth removing his core and replacing that? Was it damaged somehow in the crash? asked Honesty. She looked to Petto for answers. I've already thought about this, but we risk losing who Pin is if we tamper with this the engineer replied. What about his fuel cells? Could they be replaced? asked Coach. Replaced them twice already. It doesn't seem to make any difference, he replied. What about an electrical charge to his core matrix? Give it a boost? asked Pin with a grin. Honesty squealed in delight, jumped into his arms, laughing as she hugged him tight. Coach and Petto each slapped his back, glad to have him back. It's good to have you back, my son, Lord Petto declared. Thank you. It's good to be back, Pepe, Pin smiled in gratitude. And, well, that was that. It hadn't taken long for the story of the Lazarus children to hit the newsstand's ground side, with a fantastical story of a mechanical superboy and his insect saving the day. Nor had it taken long for the child's slave trafficking ring to be discovered when Skyland started falling slowly out of the sky. It became imperative for authorities to find out who was supposed to be working the engine boiler rooms and was neglecting their duty. The news articles went on to say that the city management had quickly hired a group of seven dwarves at an incredible pay rate. Nothing was mentioned of the gang who had stolen the children in the first place. But Pin did find a rather peculiar story about how circus animals were found eating a butler and a dock worker. Pin smiled and closed the newspaper, ready for his next grand adventure. The End So quoth this raven. My darlings, I absolutely love Joy Findlay's stories and her wonderful steampunk take on them. Next week, I will be starting Snow White, which I also have her permission for. I don't know if she's seen these yet. Um, Wattpad is not quite as busy as Reddit to get messages back and forth. But um, 
I hope she's seen this. I'm going to start Snow White. And um, hopefully by the time I'm done with that, I will have permission for more stories. If you want to hear more, please let me know in the comments. Um, so I know whether to continue or not. And I will do my very best to comment back. I love talking to you, my darlings. Um, give this video a like also. If you really don't feel like commenting, at least so I, you've got a vote. Um, even a down vote, if you're, this isn't your thing, that's okay too. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And ring the little bell so you know when to come up and see me. Feel free to share my videos anywhere. Send it out there so that we can... Have more darlings join us. And these steampunk stories, these uh, fairy tales are suitable for little crows, little ravens, little pups, chicks, kits, anything you can think of. Bye-bye, <laughs> my darlings.